Hi, my name is Andrew, my partner is Matt, and today we're presenting on Nyquist and Bode plots. These plots are used to determine the stability of systems and to determine the maximum control or gain to keep the system stable. So first, um, we're familiar with this closed loop model where the system has a feedback response, but in the development of Nyquist and Bode plots, we actually open up this loop here. And we cut the loop and we move the H to the end here to take the straight through run um, of y to y. Now this is done because in the closed loop model you end up with the denominator here and if you were to make complex both the numerator and denominator plus one it's very hard to achieve um, a workable polar form uh, simple enough to model these responses. So when we open up the loop we no longer have a closed loop which is usually put in this spot in the denominator so this becomes zero plus one and the straight through loop over one just becomes the straight through loop. Now this is very helpful because um, in the form of this straight through loop in the numerator, this can be split up very nicely into the real and imaginary parts where the frequency response model can then be applied to split it up into, like I said, the real and imaginary parts. Now in polar form, this equals the amplitude ratio um, times e to the negative j phi omega and that model can then be used to plot later on these plots. Now, as to why we don't use the closed loop, one, we just want the straight through model, where the human is the comparator in this case, to determine the fact of, is the system stable? And if it is, the limits of stability in terms of amping up the controller gain or not. So continuing on with our discussion about the Nyquist plots, this is done in polar coordinates. So we're just gonna keep, uh, go with the equation that we were left off with from Andrew, where the open loop transfer function is equal to the real portion times the imaginary, or plus the imaginary portion times j, is all equal to the amplitude ratio times e to the negative j times the phase angle of omega. Now, if you take that and you plot it in polar coordinates um, with the real portion being on the x-axis and the imaginary portion being on the y-axis, any given point in this, in this grid is going to have um, two parameters, the amplitude ratio and the phase angle. The phase angle being the distance from zero and the amplitude ratio being uh, the respective magnitude of the real and imaginary portions uh, on their respective axes. So if we apply the Pythagorean theorem, this is sort of how the amplitude ratio is solved. You take the square of the imaginary portion plus the square of the real portion, again, just plot it here and there to get the magnitude in the middle. And then to, uh, just to remind you, tangent uh, of any angle is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. Um, and so in this instance, the opposite is going to be uh, the imaginary portion of omega and the adjacent section is going to be the real portion of omega. So to solve for the phase angle, you simply take tangent of negative one or the arctan of the imaginary portion over the real portion. Now, if you continue on to plotting GOL, uh, you have this characteristic equation determined by uh, the open loop transfer function, which is, again, using our block flow diagram, GCGVG times H is equal to zero. And what you see, at least with like a P-only controller, is this sort of spiral shape. And as you increase the gain, you're, you're also increasing the magnitude of response. So essentially, as gain grows, this spiral is getting further and further from the origin, um, which is pretty instrumental in determining stability. So we've prepared three examples for you guys, one that's a P-only, one that uses PI control, and a third that uses a PID controller. And with each of these problems, you have sort of two objectives. The first is to determine if the system is stable under the current parameters, and the second is to determine the ultimate KCU, or KC. And so that's like uh, the controller gain at metastability. And when you're doing these problems, you're constructing the graphs at a gain-neutral system, so K is one, and you're looking at the points in which um, the phase angle is negative 180 degrees. And the reason for that is the tangent of negative 180 is zero. And so your phase angle drops out of the equation and we only become concerned with uh, your amplitude ratio uh, or gain, which is how you're calculating that here. Um, so for this first example, we essentially have somewhat of a spiral shape, which is typical of the P only controllers. Um, and basically 
this again is gain neutral, so K is one. And so in this instance, you have negative 181 falling outside of your envelope. And this is again, the envelope for instability. And so any point that would fall in this region, if this, if negative 181 fell here for your gain neutral graph, you would see uh, an unstable graph. But in this instance, because our point uh, on the limit of the envelope is negative 180.5 and 181 falls out of that, this is gonna be a stable system. And for determining the ultimate gain um, for metastability, you just do one over this 0.5 value, which turns out to be two. Um, for the PI, only, or PI controller, we get a slightly different graph shape where this time it's somewhat of like an, an S going on. Um, and anything to the right of this region is unstable. And so you can see in this instance, once again, we have negative 181 falling outside of uh, the envelope for instability uh, for this gain neutral system. And so uh, we know that this system is gonna be stable. And then the ultimate gain, again, falls on this envelope is at uh, a magnitude of 0.25, and so you're gonna take one over that 0.25 value, which comes out to four. Um, it's also worth noting that on both of these graphs, if we were to increase the amplitude of the graph, you would only sort of bring the envelope further out. So on this one, this is me increasing the amplitude ratio, and then on this one, it would sort of ebb out further these directions if we increase the amplitude ratio. So when it comes to the PID systems, we get a shape here where there's multiple loops and it's crossing the real axis multiple times. And this changes the envelope of instability to include multiple points on this real axis. Now, given that, as you can see, there are points both inside the region of instability and outside the instability. So the question becomes, what are, there are now multiple um, KC ultimates that have to be solved for. So, and you can see here this negative 181 of the um, neutral gain system is it falls out of this envelope of instability and we know that this system is stable but now we must calculate using the kcu equation what are the limits of this when it becomes unstable so in terms of this as one can see for this system to become unstable this would have to shrink inward meaning we need a smaller um, amplitude of uh, amplitude ratio so this point here where the stability region begins is negative 182 and 1 over 2 gains a controller gain of 1 half. So this is the first root bound of instability and the second bound as out here as one can see is negative 184. So the ultimate controller gain for that uh, limit is 1 over 4, 1 over the AR here. So as one can see, when, this, when the controller gain is shrunk by any metric between one fourth and one half, you will have anything unstable because it'll either shrink this point to here or it'll shrink this point to here, meaning everything falling in between will be unstable. As an example, this negative 183 uh, controller gain of one third, which is within this region, will yield an unstable system. Granted, anything outside of that system will remain stable if the, um, PID system is shrunk by that amount. So both negative 181 is obviously stable to begin with, so the neutral system of one of um, KC will remain stable, and if you shrink by something as much as, as small as one-fifth um, controller gain, it will also remain stable outside of the unstable region. Okay, so moving on from the Nyquist plots, we are now gonna move on to the Bode plots. And the Bode plots display very similar information as the Nyquist plots do, except it is done in the Cartesian coordinate planes as opposed to the polar coordinate system. So uh, from this Bode plot, visually speaking, we could obtain some important information uh, listed here. The corresponding uh, frequency, the crossover frequency, the amplitude ratio, the crossover amplitude ratio, the controller gain ultimate, and ZN tuning parameters. So visually speaking here, we have two stacked graphs, graphs of the amplitude ratio and the phase angle. And starting with the phase angle of the gain neutral case, negative 180, we take negative 180 out to where it intersects this curve here. Now at this point, we can gain two very valuable pieces of information. We can gain the crossover frequency, which then leads us to the amplitude ratio where it intersects at the corresponding crossover amplitude ratio.
So to begin with, we're going to call WC, which is the crossover frequency, pi for the sake of this example. So we'll fill it in down here. And then, as we can see, pi taken out on the amplitude ratio graph right here, call that pi, it corresponds with a value of 0 0.75 for the amplitude ratio. Now, given the gain neutral case, the boundary of stability is 1 here, and as we can see, 0 0.75 is less than 1. So is this stable? Yes. Now, the simple calculation of 1 over ARC, so 1 over 0 0.75 is going to be um, 0 0.333, well, one, sorry, 1 1.333, excuse me, um, giving us our ultimate controller gain of 1.33. Now, with that, we can then solve for the uh, period ultimate down here, which you would plug in pi, and this would equal 2. Now this has special importance in the ZN tuning parameters, which Matt is going to explain. Yeah. And just to clarify, this uh, period ultimate here is the period during metastability. So the, from the information that you've gleaned from your Bode plot, you can take that over to a Zico Nichols table and pretty quickly determine the tuning parameters uh, for your system depending on the control system. Um, so for the instance of a PID controller, we go ahead and we look at this uh, row, and for the KC column, we have 0.6 times KCU, so 0.6 times 1.33, which is about 0.8. For tau y, for the PID controller, it's PU over 2, so 2 over 2 is 1. And then tau v, we have PU over 8, which is 2 over 8, which is 1 fourth. So as you can see, we've pretty simply and quickly determined our tuning parameters from this body plot. It's also just worth mentioning that uh, you can also determine, once you figure out these two graphs, where one falls on the amplitude ratio graph, you can take that over to its corresponding crossover frequency and then determine from the phase angle graph the angle at which you, ach you achieve that amplitude ratio of one for your plot. Uh, that's all we have today, so thank you for listening. Yep, thanks for tuning in.